Okay, chapter 19. Seizing an American Empire. Now, think about that for a moment. Seizing an American Empire. Imperialist versus anti-imperialist at this time. But the ideas behind this chapter is still prevalent today. How much should Americans be involved in, in foreign affairs? Uh, what is America's role in the world? Now, at this time, uh, you'll some background information. By this time, you have what's called the New Imperialism. England, Germany, Belgium, France, Spain, and then later even Italy, all of these countries are going to get control of all of Africa. They're going to be fighting over it and split it up and most of Asia. And now the United States is coming into this game late. But wait a second. The United States won independence from Britain because we believe that people should be able to govern themselves. Right? Isn't that how we were founded? That people shouldn't have an empire? They shouldn't control other people? That we, the people, should govern and determine for ourselves our fate? And yet, here we are, Americans, creating an empire, which is completely contradictory to our ideals. But we justify it. Ah, we rationalize it. Well, those people, and this goes back to the last chapter, those people aren't civilized. They're not capable of democracy. So we have to control them so that we can teach them democracy. Uh, if we don't get control of those places, then the British and the French will, or the Belgians, and they're going to be worse than we ever could be. Ah, white man's burden. That was a poem by the British poet Rudyard Kipling, and he wrote that to tell Americans, hey, Americans, you need to get control of the Philippines. Go ahead and take it from the Spanish, but don't let it go because it is the white man's burden. It is our burden to have to take care of these wild savages and teach them, civilize them, and educate them. That's why they can't have freedom and control of their own country because they're just more like animals, but we'll, we'll get them there. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's pretty sick, right? But that's, that's the viewpoint then. Not everybody, there were tons of anti-imperialists who were like, no, this is wrong. Mark Twain, Williams Jennings Bryan, uh, a number of, of uh, senators and others that have objected. So this was a serious debate at the time. Uh, but the, the imperialists in many ways would win out because we go to war with Spain so that basically we can get possessions. Now, the justification for it was not that. It was like, oh, they attacked the USS Maine, and they're ter terrible to the Cubans, and so we have to do that. But what it really is is a grab for empire. Um, as the chapter says, we seize an American empire, and by the time it's done, we will control uh, millions of people in the Philippines who, led by Emilio Aguinaldo, is like, hey, we fought the Spanish. We will fight you. The Spanish-American War was over in less than a year. It's called a splendid little war because hardly anyone died. But what's often not taught in the history books, I discuss it in this book, this is a pretty good book, is far more Americans died trying to suppress the F Filipino insurrection. Because the Filipinos were like, we want you gone too, USA. And it was brutal. And I say, I think there was like four or 5,000 Americans that died in that. But there were hundreds of thousands of Filipinos that died. In the end, the insurrection would be crushed, the United States would take control of the Philippines, and that would have lasting effect because one of the largest immigrant groups today is the Philippines because they speak English and Spanish and then their uh, native language too, which I'm forgetting at the time. Uh, but uh, so, yeah, that would have a huge impact. It's going to have a huge impact on World War II. World War II begins now too because when we're in the Philippines and, we're, and then when we're meddling in the Far East, uh, the Japanese... I mean, like, why are you guys here? This is our area, you know? We'll get to that later. Tons of stuff in this that's leading uh, us down the path to, you know, global intervention. 
Now, later it will be in the name of democracy and values and freedom, but right now it seems more in the name of uh, imperialism and creating an empire. Um, a big person that is introduced in this chapter that's larger than life is Teddy Roosevelt. If this were my traditional class, I've got a whole biography to do about Teddy Roosevelt. He is one of the larger than life's more interesting characters. Um, I love Teddy Roosevelt, and I hate Teddy Roosevelt. <laughs> That's why he's such an interesting person, for sure, because uh, like so many people, he does some really neat things and some other things you're like, whoa, wait a second, Teddy. We won't have time to get into all of that. Um, and so uh, Teddy Roosevelt, big stick diplomacy, huge influence. Uh, he oversees the building of the Panama Canal as well. Uh, they're gonna also going to get it in Taft, and then Wilson, Woodrow Wilson and intervention in Mexico. So we got our hands in all sorts of things, and I think one of the important things from this chapter is America has become a world power. We've become a global power. We were just kind of doing our own thing over here. We had two oceans separating us, trying to kind of stay out of things. Uh, after the Civil War, the world is a global place, and uh, that becomes nearly impossible to try to stay out uh, and not be involved in world affairs. Uh, and so we do, um, and, and we have been ever since, um, sometimes for better, sometimes for worse. Uh, but it all starts with this period, the taking of Hawaii from Queen Lola Kualani in the Spanish-American War, the building of the Panama Canal, the Roosevelt Corollary, uh, Wilson's inter dollar diplomacy by Taft and Wilson's interventions in Mexico, uh, and so, uh, yeah, I have for your assignment today a different assignment. I've got three political cartoons. I love the political cartoons from this era. They're so interesting. Often they're funny. Sometimes they're kind of sick because they're very racist. But nonetheless, they are definitely interesting. And so your job is going to be able to, inter to interpret those uh, for, the, for the, your essay discussion post. There's three of them and uh, look at them carefully. You will need to understand this period. You will need to, to read the chapter and have an understanding of kind of what the heck is going on. So in that regard, I think it might be a, a tough assignment. Um, I don't think you're going to find an answer on chat. Uh, what do they call it? Chat BT, I forget. Um, I've, I've looked at those and uh, it plugged that in. I might plug it in myself to see what comes up, but I'm not sure how the computer is going to be able to look at a political cartoon. So that'll be fun. I hope you have fun with it. I hope you're interested in this chapter. Uh, read the book carefully. It's a good read. It really is. This is a story, and it's a very interesting story. So uh, email me, as always, with questions, and uh, have fun. Thanks.